Aaron. Yes. I love you. Clapping. Zach sang. <laughs> Guys, can we finally talk about, I mean, I just, I know that this is how we started the last one, but I might have to start this one like it too. I used to tell you suck a dick, Zach sang, in hopes and pray that you would. Do it. And you do it now. I did. I'm I did. so happy for thank, you. Thank you so much. I'm so proud. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's my first real relationship and like first love and Gosh. probably my last love, God willing. No, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I thought of that. At a I got scared. I didn't <laughs> know what you meant. I was like, is this, are you guys jumping together? What is it? No. Yeah, at last. First I, and last. I hope so. I really, oh I really love Oh my gosh. I mean, that's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, it's special. I'm really happy for you. It's really, I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, love is wild. Like, yeah. Watching friends experience it and navigate it and <laughs> so many times. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I but I learned a lot from every human being who is going through love. I didn't learn much love from my parents, just being honest. Like, and my parents can watch this and be angry at me for it. But like, it was just different. Like the example of love I got at home was it's just different. It was different. It, it's it's interesting. You know, happiness hits different in this year. Yeah. And I think moving forward and a lot of it, I think, has to do with who I choose to live with and share my life with and take on this fucking journey with. I think so, too. But also because you yourself were ready for it. So don't not give yourself credit, please. No, you're 100 percent right. Because yeah. you, you, you can't take on. You're a different person. I am. I right? have to say. Yeah. Thanks. And you know me and you, for... Yeah, it makes my heart really happy. Liz and I talk about it. <laughs> we do. We're very proud of our little son. I love you so much. We love you. It is really... Your mommies love you. Thank you. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Mom. Like, I went through like a whole like year period where I just exclusively called you Mom. Yeah. And the I did. two of us, we are... That's what we are. <laughs> it's true. That's our most important role. I, you know, it was so funny. This morning, I was thinking about Liz as like an Italian mother. She's recently <laughs> given Italian mother more than ever before. More than ever, but she's given it since she was 12. Totally, but now it's oozing out of her. 100, well, I mean, it's like among us. It's well, coming. It's, uh, it's right here. It is, you think? No, but, but not at all. But sorry, fuck, sorry. No, it's not. But also like, it's that, it's, she, you know what I mean? She treats all of her friends like children. She treats, which she has for a while. She treats Always, her dogs like forever, children. Though. I mean, she treats like her very old friends like kids. Yeah, um, she's very maternal, but is not pregnant. At just all. so everyone, just to make it extra clear. Yeah, no. Um, <laughs> no, thank you for, for, for acknowledging though that love, because it's been like this weird thing in my life that, I don't know, like in my relationship world, like been stunted a little bit. I've seen him. Yeah. I've seen it. We've seen each other's. Oh my God. We've both seen a lot of each. We've both helped each other through so much. I mean, I remember I called you the first night I thought I was going to lose my virginity. Mm -hmm. I oh my God, this was like five years ago. No, longer. I mean, longer than that. Seven? Could, yeah, could be, no, could be nine. Whoa. Yeah, I've known you 15 years. Oh my God, that I was, was so long ago. Long ago, and it was to a girl. Yes, That's it was. how long ago it was. And then didn't you walk in and she was like fucking your brother or something? She's fucking somebody else. <laughs> I'm kidding. In my sister's room. I'm kidding. You were, yeah, you were close. <laughs> It was crazy. I literally was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely going to, like, oh, I've had this crush on this girl. She's totally giving me signs. Nightmare. That is deeply traumatic. I, I go to deliver her a cup of water. A cup of water? And I just see... Of water? Her on top of this other guy, and I drop the cup, and I just yeah, walk away. That is so traumatic. Yeah. I can... I, yeah. I hope you can forget it. One day. It's eternal sunshine. <laughs> That'll be one that we erase. Doctor... Hook them up. <laughs> Work on me. <laughs> yeah. We have an album to go through. Yes. And an album of Eternal Sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the hardest song to write and what was the easiest song to write on this album? Oh, God. I, I... Hardest? I think Bye. Honestly, it's a very simple and silly lyric and it's not... <laughs> and, but it was hard for the reason that I desperately didn't want it to sound like a fuck you. I wanted it to sound like I need to leave, so bye. Mm. You know, like I wanted it to be kind of rooted in self-awareness and like not fuck you, you go. But with love, I'm emigrating from the situation. That's why I put it after 
the intro end of, end the, of world. the world because it asks a question that is sort of takes accountability and is self-aware and then going into buy is like prefacing it because I think my biggest fear on when it comes to songwriting in general is just kind of um even if the concept is strong and even if empowerment is important and I want to empower people l making sure that it is kind and that it leads with empathy and that it has that. And, it's oh. still fun, but it's like, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't like any sort of harshness that isn't in my DNA. But also beautifully aware. And I think it, like, dude, it's not the first time that I've been hostage to these tears, acknowledging that another relationship is over again. I mean, it, it, that is awareness. Yeah. No? Yeah, this song, and I hope, I hope that this is okay to say. I might go on a little bit of a deep dive, and I hope that it's all right to say. Of course. Is it okay if I talk about my mom? My mom a lot. She's here in the corner listening. But is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Got Are you sure? Approval. I might like air your shit out a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got shit to air. She, she said she's wearing a purple lip today. She's yeah. fine. Okay. Okay. Um, but no, I think like the reason why I felt okay to go there is because of my mom, honestly. And whoa. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. <laughs> almost there, almost there. Okay. I think a lot of um I think growing up kind of you want what you don't have like you my parents got divorced for all the right reasons they weren't supposed to be together and um you kind of crave when you grow up the happily ever after the one is the one is the one so you ignore all these issues and you you kind of um you cling on to that fairy tale and you kind of self abandon and I think um, my mom is a fierce example of not doing that. And um, a massive thing that I learned in my year of Saturn return <laughs> is um, that my fears of replicating a certain cycle was actually the opposite. I was like, oh, wow. I want to be so much more like her than I am. I want to have the strength to say bye kindly when something isn't fucking right. It's as simple as that. And she's the strongest, most brilliant person I know. And it's also a disco track, which is my mom's favorite thing in the world. So it kind of feels like my mom's song or like something that I wrote from my mom's perspective almost, um, because that's something that I, I watched her do a few times. and. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like... I watched my mom I, do the same thing. Yeah. And there's strength in goodbye. Yeah. Because and it's it's hard to... It's it's hard, especially when the most is invested. Yeah, and especially when you do have so much love, you know? Um, so yeah, that's a kind of a, a pattern that I realized I don't need to be afraid of because it means doing the right thing. It means listening to your soul and not being afraid to be uncomfortable. Don't Want to Break Up Again follows by. And yeah. they are coupled. Again, like, these songs are connected, so when you listen, the best way to listen is in totality. And I top to bottom. I believe so. I believe so. I prefer it that way. And then when you have your favorites, once you, once you know, you can do it. Oh, you yeah. Want. But yeah, they are coupled in an interesting way. Because it's kind of like, Don't Want to Break Up Again is kind of like the hangover of by, in a way. It's mm -hmm. like, okay, that, that this has happened, but I'm reflecting. And there are so many polarizing feelings that we experience as human beings kind of with regard to one situation. And that's what I like about these two being back to back because in Bai, I say, at least we know we tried, didn't we? The two of us, we did good. And then in Don't Wanna Break Up Again, it's like, well, you didn't even try till the end. <laughs> like both feelings exist at different, you know what I mean? So oh. I like the humanness of that. I like that they are, layered and complicated and all of the different emotions that come with loving and leaving are kind of showcased, it, I guess. It, it, it is a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a process, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's not a, just a one and done situation. It is something that is felt and 
experienced and uh, it, it, it's over time. So yeah. a song like Don't Want to Break You Up Again and then Bye, how long or how many different versions of those songs exist before you got the version that we hear today? Uh, I think there are a few of Bye and I think there's one of Don't Want to Break Up Again. What are the biggest differences between them? Is it lyrical differences? Yeah, I think by, I wrote on a day when I was very upset and emotional. So it was a little bit more uh, reactive. And I, and it just wasn't representative of like how I actually feel. So I, I like filtered it through and I combed through a bunch of times. And it was important to me to make sure that it wasn't just like that for that exact reason. Because I, it's like important to me that, yeah. There's something to capturing that song in the heat of the moment, right? Or yeah, capturing absolutely. Any song in the heat of the moment, and that's where honestly, that's where Max is. So, so I mean, he's the most brilliant producer in the entire world, and like the greatest guy and yeah. great dad, and the best person, the best human being on so, the planet. But as a friend, he's like a friend to me on a personal level, but also on an artist level. Like he will make sure that I don't water down my truth too much or that I don't like make things too custom to how others will, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he, he's just, he, he's very protective of me as a human first and foremost, but then also secondary to that, he's very protective of the body of work. It, how do you know he was the right person to bring this story to? Oh, oh my gosh. I mean, he's Max Martin, but also just how he makes me feel. Yeah, he knows you. Yeah. He knows me so well. And he, um, I don't know. We really, we push each other in such a beautiful way that is like we're, we're both so supportive of one another and excited. I don't know. It, it's just beautiful. We're both like, I, like I'm such a happy student to be in the room with him. You know, I'm just so grateful to be in his presence. We'll just sit there together and kind of just, it happens very quickly sometimes. That was the thing that we did uh, that was really productive this album was if it wasn't there, we would kind of jump around. Cool. Go to a different idea and see if it was there. And then if it wasn't, we'd come back to it and bounce around. But everything just poured out. So, you know, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was very interesting. Once the melodies were there, maybe he would go work on a different track or something and then come back and check on me and I'd be there with my laptop scribbling away. And then, you know, it was just, it was very intimate. It was very intimate. Was it was the, the two world. of us for most of it. That, yeah. Just really you, him, and Ilya, right? Yeah. Ilya came for the very last trip, and it was so much fun. Um, wow, he, that gave me goosebumps. Yeah. Ilya and Shintaro had been sending us beats Shintaro, and stuff like that. Who, so they were, they were kind of like virtually there with us, but it, for, in the room, it was mostly just me and Max for the, most of the time. And Shintaro, who comes or from positions, Or me alone. And, right? uh, and Max was, would call him and FaceTime and check on me and whatever, but he was here for a, a week in September a week in October and a week in November. And in between, I was coming every day on my own. So it was really vulnerable. It was really naked. It was really fun. Yeah. Another memory that I'll keep with me forever is when I walk into the studio to hear this album, <laughs> you are sitting behind this ginormous monitor <laughs> and there's this font, like a thousand audio files in front of you. And you're just f finishing the last song on the album. Yeah. You're literally doing it all yourself. Yeah. Well, not all, but, I mean, I, but you, that's very kind. But I do like to... There's a real yeah. hand in this process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I also had the privilege of working with the most incredible producers in the entire world. What do you I'm learn so from him? so blessed. What? What do you learn from him that's made you into a better producer and artist? Just to be who he is and be so curious and so hungry still. There are so many codes left to crack, in his opinion. It's really crazy. Like, he is one of one and his generosity, his curiosity. It's like when you spend time with him, you learn very quickly why he is who he is. He has no idea that he's Max Martin. And it's the most, it's my favorite thing in the world because it's the thing that he lives for. He loves it so much. We spent so many long, long, long days working on this album together, just he and I and, um, it's just such a, an honor to get to know him in that way and also even become closer as friends after 
12 years of knowing each other, this is like the most time we've spent together. We went to shows. We went to like <laughs> little dinners. We would walk to work every day in the morning. We walked the, the, high, the high line. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, all the way. Like it was so much fun. We walked together every single day. Those to work. moments make their way into the body of work. Absolutely. You can hear it. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad. It's, you, you do have a relationship with him that's unlike, I mean, anything I've ever seen with a produce. I mean, like any artist produce. It's really special. He's incredible. And the way he, he treats people is the most important thing. Like he could be learn. who he is and be. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Ignore her. Oh, no, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> he could be who he is. And be any type of way. He could be like other people. Like he could be, you know, you never know. And, and he's just the best human being. And he's the most incredible producer in the world. And curiosity is a way I to... I rest my case. Like, like, but curiosity is so on the nose as a way to describe him. Because yeah. I haven't spent much time with the man at all. Most time I spent with him was we went to Disneyland together. Oh, my God. That's it, the best story. It, 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 it's really... A lot. It is a lot. But he just asked a ton of questions and was really fascinated with everything. Yeah. The business of Disney. Incredibly <laughs> curious, but also beautiful soul. Yeah. And like a really special person. Yeah. And it's so crazy. Like The best. Yeah. But there's something to that humility that allows... Him to be the best creator in the world. Exactly. He's so brilliant because there's no ego in it for him. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. You're allowed to grow and learn so much more when you're not obsessed with Ac yeah, optics and being right. You know yeah, what I mean? accolades, He doesn't even ego. know. He's just curious. Yeah, he's, he's just brilliant. That's really, that being said, what does going number one mean to you, right? Oh my God. That is an accolade. That's a feat that's the first time done this year, going direct to number one, having a number one debut. Yeah, I mean, it's like, such an incredible honor and my fans are to thank and they are the most incredible people in the entire world and I'm just like I'm so grateful I try, I try not to put too much weight in those things we've talked about that a lot but when it happens it's really special and I like will always celebrate it when it does happen even though it's like not of course at all what matters but it's special and I just am grateful because it also just speaks to how many people it resonated with, yes and, and also to just my fans and how incredible they are. It's because of them. And also I'm glad because then now they have that and that matters a lot to them. <laughs> Why was yes and the right first single to introduce this entire story? Um, I think yes and is the one that lives on its own and I also think it just kind of sets the tone by saying everyone has shit going on that you are you don't know about. And you and we you know that too. You know? Totally. So just shh. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. And like, the proper tone for this album. Yeah. It's really funny because like that is the message of the song. And then People share things on Instagram, like inspirational quotes that are like, you never know. Don't judge a book by the cover. And, the, you know, it's just such a funny duality with the Internet, how people can be oh. so <laughs> toxic positive. And then the next tweet is the meanest thing I've ever read in my entire life or the next whatever it is. It's funny. It's a funny time. So I, thought, I think Yes End is the right thing to just say, hey, we're all experiencing the same kind of journey on, in a different way, on a different level, on a different this. And um, I liked it because... It's also just expressing a whole bunch of feelings that I've had for the past forever of my career. There's always been a conversation about my body, my face, my hair, my voice, my everything. And it's like, if you change it and correct it, it's, then it's wrong again for different reasons. It's like, all right, it's, I'm done. It's done. I'm just going to be. That's all you can do. I'm just going to be because I fucking love being. I love it. Just be And I want everyone to feel that way as well. Oh, resonates with literally everybody. Bless and release and yeah, shimmy. 
<laughs> Why was Mariah Carey the right person to remix this song or feature it? Beca oh. oh my God, because she's the, I mean, the queen of my life. The reason I sing. <laughs> Is that true? Absolutely. Yeah. She's my number one vocal inspiration. Obviously, you did she's, I, my, she's mother. That I, is that is mother. That's real mother. I remember. I'm pretty sure I had a CD, a physical CD of, CD of Ariana Grande covers. Emotions and emotions was one of them. One hundred percent. Diamonds was another one. But uh, that's like, great. We're that's only great. girl in the world. You, there's Shut like a, up! Oh I remember this fucking yeah. Joe knows. Yeah, I remember this fucking yeah. CD. No, but I mean, it's it's. it's I bumped it. It's almost. It's like the dream come true. If you're gonna have anybody do a remix crazy it should be the queen of a remixes and of 90s music and of all music but also of my life like queen of my life and i love it so much it's so, so good it elevated it so much she's the queen when yeah. did you write her verse and like i didn't she did what i was like please if it's not too much to ask just go do whatever the fuck you want she did the intro, like all the high whistles in the intro. She did the pre-harmony. She did the hook. She doubled the hook. I was like, Serban, can you please make her vocals louder than anything else in the song? I want to only hear the harmonies. I want to only hear her ad-libs. I want to be in the background as quiet as humanly possible. It's my heaven. She did the whole bridge, all these ad-libs. Oh, my God. I'm, it's just so surreal. What an honor. My God. That's really special. It's so special. And I feel like a song that, I don't know, I, I mean, every, it resonates with everybody, but... Also, yeah, to have someone who, oh my gosh, has probably felt this way in her career, I would imagine, so many times, you know? The oh. queen of just kind of rising above it all, and to have her grace it, oh my God. Can you genuinely tell me what it's like to have respect from people you have idolized? in this lifetime, because it's not, it doesn't stop with Mariah Carey. Like, and this is not the first time you've worked with Mariah Carey. Like, it, Kristen Chenoweth being another, just off top of yeah. mind. Dude, Aretha Franklin when she graced this planet. Yeah. There's so many incredible artists that show you respect and appreciation. That's, <laughs> it's something we never talk about because again, it's like our relationship is mostly rooted in human Ari. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's, what is it? <laughs> is that validation? Is it, what is it? It's validation, it's, it's surreal, it's like, it doesn't compute. Like, I can't really hold it all. It's very surreal. Um, and it's just like, I don't know, I, I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for so many of my idols and inspirations to embrace me or to have embraced me the way that they have. And it just feels very surreal. I don't know. Real recognizes real. <laughs> like the greats have the ability to recognize that in somebody else. I, ah. It's crazy. It's surreal. It is. By the way, a, a remix of Yes and Mariah Carey came around. Crazy. It. It's wild. All right, back to the album. Saturn Returns is really what's next on my yeah. list. Because it goes into the world where you're questioning things, into buy, into don't want to break up again. And then there's this change, this shift, sonically too, to a certain degree. Yeah. But there's still disco elements that come through the rest of the mm -hmm. album. Why was that moment the right place for an interlude, a shift? Um, for an interlude? Yeah, because that's what Sound Returns really is. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's a really tiny interlude. But I, I think it just sort of, Saturn, Eternal Sunshine feels like a wake-up moment, sort of like a pivotal moment in the story. Uh, and the Saturn returns coming right before it, just kind of with the wake up, it tells you to wake up. Um, I don't know. It just felt like setting up the rest of the album in a way. I don't know. Who is speaking? Diana Garland. She is an astrologist. My dear friend, Will Loftus, who choreographed Yes And, um, who I met on Wicked. He's uh, one of the associate choreographers. When we met, it was like the most cosmic collision. And uh, he sent me that vocal that he like chopped and put together. And he was like, this made me think of you. Um, and then Ilya put orchestration under it. And I was like, this is, I hope it's okay that this is going on my album. And he was like crying. 
What yeah. does astrology... And I was crying, too. The role of astrology in your life has meaning, right? Yeah, for sure. I mean, even tarot cards. When yeah, I went to the studio, yeah, yeah. you gave me a reading. You've been doing readings on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you look to astrology for? Is it understanding of what you're going through? Is it an understanding of what will be? Yeah, I think it's kind of a a tool to help us hear what we need to hear sometimes and kind of look forward with hope and awareness and also <laughs> reads us for filth sometimes. <laughs> sometimes we need to hear it and just looking to something bigger than us to kind of help us make sense of it. Does that make sense? Totally. By the way, if you don't know what it is, and we explained it, uh, you know, in part I'm one. I'm sipping a hidden coffee. Go, Go ahead. On. Go ahead. Talk. It is when you're born, Saturn's in a certain position, and it takes 29 and a half years for Saturn to return to that position. And when it returns to that position, you are faced with deep awareness of oneself and a confronting of patterns, correct? Yes. And a wake up. Course correction, one Course would say. Course correction. When you, you think, when do you know for certain that it's the title of the album? Well, I, I kind of, I've always loved that movie since I was a little girl. Yeah. Um, I am a huge Jim Carrey fan. I always have been. And um, I was always sort of attracted to the idea of writing a song around that. But I think once I realized that the rest of the songs were kind of forming a story that felt kind of similar to Eternal Sunshine, where there's sort of this like cycle, this, you know, that totally. everyone's trying to break. I kind of, it just fell into place. Do you believe in that? Like, is there something to, when you're making music, just letting go to the universe and or wherever your brain will go and just seeing what happens? Because we have like artists come on the show and like there's a few different schools of thought, but like one artist may say like, I write a hundred songs and that's how I become a good songwriter. And then Chris Martin comes on a bunch of times and preaches about how the universe gave him Viva La Vida and <laughs> he just like opens himself up and it just beams from the fucking sky. I love that. But there has to, is there an in-between anywhere where like craft Absolutely. meets the I, universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm somewhere in between. I've learned, I don't know. I said somewhere between being a literal witch, <laughs> literal witch, I'm not kidding, and being like the most realistic, cut, dry, like, you know? Yeah, totally. I don't know. I feel like I'm my most productive when I am open and uh, also when I pretend no one's ever going to hear it. That's when I'm my, my, my best I think. At what point in the process do you have to be reminded that people will hear it? When it's over. Got it. <laughs> and then I backtrack <laughs> many steps and I clean things up and I figure it out. Just kidding. Supernatural. Mm -hmm. This song really, there's two songs I feel the most understood by on this album. Mm -hmm. It is Supernatural. The, the horniest one? I mean a little bit, yeah. That's what you feel? very much connected to my current life. <laughs> Really? Like, it is so connected. That's so funny. <laughs> You're like the one I align with the most. The That's what about? So That's sweet. Alignment. I am so happy for you. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Thank you again. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you believe <laughs> that the right love is actually supernatural? What the fuck are you talking about? That's where I'm at right now in life. That's beautiful. Thanks. I love that. Thank you. It's really special. Yay. It is a special place. What was the last song you wrote for the album? Imperfect for You, which is my favorite. Why is it your favorite? I love it so much. I love it so much. I don't know why it's my favorite. I think sonically it's my favorite. It's very different for me. It's very like trippy, rubber soul mm. vibes. And that is kind of my, my favorite music to listen to. And I don't think I've ever really explored it for myself, but it just felt really fun to um, lean into it and make something like super trippy 60s, organic feeling, you know, just capturing that kind of thing. There's something special about being able to be your truest self with someone. Yeah. No matter how imperfect that, that person may be at that time. Or we, I am. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, that's right. yeah. Totally. I'll be the one you love to hate. 
Oh, moving on. Yeah, go on. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Move no, no. right on. Go on. No, no, no. Oh, moving, no, no. moving, moving, moving. No, no. I want to talk about the, one of the lyrics. Everyone is. Everyone over there is tired. Let's go. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Well, maybe they're all on their phone. I see you all. Jesus Christ. No, they're done. They're done. They're all done? They've all checked out? <laughs> They've all out of it? No, but what is the most fulfilling part about making an album? When you write a song that you love so much and you are driving home or walking home and you have your headphones on and playing the bounce over and over and over again and just not being able to sleep because you're so excited about it and like waking up with it stuck in your head and like yesterday this didn't exist and today it exists and it's like this crazy I talk to Max about this all the time he's like isn't that the fucking craziest thing in the world it will never get old to me he's like it will never <gasps> Jesus Oh, that one was that one was near and big. That was giving train. That one was near and near and big. Are we? Should we? Are we in the way? No. <laughs> Something come through here. Something comes through. Something's got to come through. That was here. Oh, I have lipstick all over my chin. Come in, Michael. But I think that's the most crazy thing. Can we do this while we talk? Yeah. It's giving Mimi. It's giving Mariah. Thank you. There Michael is... Anthony, everyone. We wore the same shoes and same we... pants. We really do. I complimented your shoes when you came in. And you were like, you talking to me? Fuck yeah, I'm talking to you. There is something, though, to being able to create something from nothing and Thank the beauty you. involved in that. No, it's the craziest thing. We said yesterday, or not yesterday, but we said many times during this process when we became obsessed with these songs. Thank you. I love you. May I have a lippy really quick? I'm so sorry. I have been making out with this microphone, it seems. <laughs> but there's this thing where... Um, where you can't believe a thank you. Where like you come in and. Oh my God, Michelle Sugamas is gonna love this. Thank you, I love you. Thank you, I love you. Um, but there's this phenomenon. It's like the craziest thing in the world where you leave, you go to work and something happens and the next day, like this thing is there that was never there before. And it's just, you can hear it and it's beautiful and you're proud of it and you love it. Mm. That is like one of the many things, but maybe the strongest thing that I respect about artists is this creation of nothing into something and that something being so rooted in their identity and they put so much of the, the, themselves into something. Yeah. And you never know where that's going to go and then the idea you of sharing know. it. And then it becomes for other people to enjoy and it wasn't there the day before and then it's there the next day. And they may like it and they may resonate. It may resonate with them or it may not. And that's like such a beautiful thing. Art. Art. We can't be friends. Is one of my <laughs> Just describing art. Yeah. <laughs> art. As if it's the first time anyone's ever thought of art. <laughs> and we have to go. Go on. <laughs> we can't be friends. Is second favorite song next to Supernatural. Yeah. It's been in my head. I can. I. It's the strings at the end are flawless. Thank you. They make me really emotional. Those strings. I love those strings. Who are you talking to in this song? Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> I don't know. I I wanted it to be something that everyone could relate to. They can it can be whoever you want it to be about. But I know for me what it's about. I don't know. I have a hard time going into specifics because I feel like that's not the point of it. It's the point is to leave it up for people to make of it what they will. Interpretation. It's really interesting. Because to me again like I take a song like this and I apply it like to my own life. I give it my own meaning. Yeah. Right? And I apply it to somebody I hate. Like, I apply it to somebody that I know. Hate? Yeah, that I, like, there's no friendship here. There's or have given up here. on. Yes. It's Don't hate. Done. Yeah. Yeah, hate is the wrong word. I'm no. sorry. That's all right. But it, no, for you, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, it's bad to harbor that. It's such a great song. Why were the strings needed? And whose idea was it? I don't remember, but Max and I both love strings, so we were probably very both excited about that. But they're just the most emotional sound in the world. I love them so much. There's yeah. a song that I, 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 it sounded like you were crying while recording it. Probably was. I wish that I hated you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What, what does that song mean to you? Um, it's like it's one of those that I, I'm so glad that feeling is captured on this album, but it's it's one that I won't listen to probably or sing live probably. But I think it's like a very important color to exist within the album because it's, yeah, just an important piece of the puzzle to me. 
it. I'm happy to acknowledge the goodness. I really am. And the efforts and that it just was not correct. And I don't need to pretend that you're a monster to make peace with this ending. That's what that song is. Sí. And it would be easier if you were, but, you, but it's just, you know what I mean? It can have not been right, and that person can still be a good person. And but I think that's like a really important song to write. Why was it needed on the album? Why, wh what part of the puzzle did it complete? Well, I think it completed the songs, the, the family of breakup songs, where I wrote from a more hurt or upset place. And it's from a more aware and grieved place where it's like, oh, I can, I can, I can give credit and, you know, make peace with this and not carry that version of you that I had when I was upset. I don't need to carry that version. Yeah. That's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to and it's like, come to terms with. <laughs> yeah, it's like grieving would be so much easier if we hated a person. It's like good riddance. But no, capturing the complexity of like what happens if I don't is imperative, I think. It's protective as well. How so? Exactly what you're talking about. I think yeah. people perceiving it and thinking something about these are just songs, but the way people sensationalize things, you know, It's protective yeah. as well. Was there a moment where you realized that this album has the ability to take on a whole life of its own that you can never even really imagine? Because it does. Like every, every, part, every piece of art has the ability to be bigger than one person, right? Mm -hmm. And live a life of its own. That's kind of happened to me many times in my life with art. Um, I don't know. I feel like a lot of the times things have become so much bigger than me as a human and kind of gotten ahead of me and I, and a lot of when I was younger was me trying to like chase after and catch up and I don't know so maybe it's I, I, I don't know it's something I try not to think about anymore in order to continue creating okay. otherwise if I think about it I will stop yeah because it's debilitating and it's debilitating absolutely I try to keep it from my brain as much as possible so that I can continue thank you let's pick things up a bit it's getting a little heavy in here it, I'm sorry it's all right <laughs> Not your fault. You didn't write the album. Go on. <laughs> I'm aware. Go on. <laughs> I can take it. Oh, boy is mine. I made this bed. <laughs> I will lay in it. It's not true. Go on. <laughs> you talk about Imperfect For You being your favorite song on the album. Yeah. Is there a song that you wish wasn't needed him. to tell this story? No. I love Imperfect For You so much. I love, yeah, sorry. No, tell me why, though. I, I, I just, I think that there's, in this day and age, <laughs> am I 900? <laughs> in this day and age, uh, we do a lot of, like, boiling things down to a 10-second TikTok or a, or a headline or a little cherry-picked quote from something. We do a lot of, like, stripping of humanness and erasure of context, and I think that even... A simple lyric like happy disaster is like making space for all of that to exist within one song and one idea and one thought and every moment of our lives contains multitudes of of feelings of thoughts of good and bad and, and wicked and goodness and you know that's also kind of what wicked is about as well it's an example of how people become what they are and how things get to where they are. There's a lot of erasing of the how and, and why these days. Totally. So is true story a bad next like song to talk about? Or? No, it's fun. Because <laughs> it's, it's a true story. It's an untrue story based on all untrue events. So go on. A true story about all the lies <laughs> you fantasize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And go the on. games I know you play. Yeah, I actually had that hook from the batch of songs that... Um, Max and I were working on for the Seth MacFarlane TV show that never happened. So that was like a sister song to fantasize. A couple of these little seedlings existed before this album. And um, I actually, in the moment, was like, we might have to save some of these for when we do an album. So that was something that I, even though it, there is a version of it out there already on TikTok, I was like, I don't, I, it feels 
so important. I love it that much that I, I kind of want to reclaim it and uh, make out of it what I wanted to originally. I what didn't, didn't want to like let them win in that way, I guess. What are the biggest changes between what people have heard of that song and what we're getting now? Oh my goodness, everything. The production, the vocals, the lyrics, the everything. It was just like a shell. It was a seedling back then. It was a song about something completely, entirely different. I don't even remember that one anymore. Can you explain to me your strategy and process when it comes to vocals and what songs require what types of vocals? Yeah. Well, I'm very picky when it comes to everything. No, but um, when I'm writing I literally am writing sitting there with like a mic like this and I'll just mumble in and there's a demo version that exists for a while until all the songs are written and then I'll come back with the proper like expensive beautiful perfect microphone for whichever vocal we're cutting sometimes we'll switch depending on what I'm singing if it's <laughs> but this one we actually use the same thing the whole time I think it was a Telefunken something something. I don't a know. Telefunken. Yeah, yeah. Good microphone. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. used one of those for a second. Yeah, Definitely not good. the one you use, but yeah. No, no. <laughs> but yeah, and then, I don't know, I'm very discerning and weird when it comes to my vocals because I, I often don't sing as much as I can sing on something because for me it has to feel emotional and it has to feel honest. I don't like to just like sing for the sake of singing um but I am singing a lot more on this album than I was on the last like three so that's that's really nice I, I enjoyed singing more but then again it, it felt honest too so yeah I think that's like really interesting singing for the sake of singing and not doing that and matching the emotion that the the, the song gives right? yeah I, I'm not like an embellisher <laughs> for the sake of embellishing but you spend a lot of time manipulating is the wrong word but like layering and yeah, that is my vocals. favorite thing in the world. That to me, because it's not like it's not like just singing. That's the voice as an instrument. So that to me is separate because I don't feel like that's singing. That feels like music to me. I love adding so many layers and and stacks and pads, even if you can't even really hear them, or even if we put like a filter over them so that it sounds like a, an instrument or a chord that's played on a something. It's like, I just, I love that. That's my heaven. I feel like that's something that not many Emotional. people know about you is, is that you will sit behind a computer and layer and do all these Oh, vocals. that's all I do. Well, and you have since I met you in like 2009. Yeah. I remember the first song I ever heard of yours and it was just that. Like, Yeah. <laughs> I, but, Only that. I mean, dude, I remember the song like it was yesterday. I was, tw I mean, I, I, like my idol is... Mariah and Imogen Heap. Heap. Yeah. And I feel like I sit somewhere in between the two of totally. them. Like that's where my brain learned everything from Imogen on the production side and Mariah from the vocal and songwriting side. And both of them, I don't know, in a blender has always been my sort of goal, I suppose. What first pushed you to learn exactly how to work these programs and be more than just somebody who comes in and lends vocals to something? Well, I loved watching Imogen. Like when I was a little girl, I fell in love with her. I wanted to have all of the technology that she used on stage. And I wanted to wrap leaves in my hair and have like a looping machine and a tenorion and all these weird things. And I wanted to produce and loop and write. And so I just kind of studied and learned. And yeah, and it began. You've gotten incredibly, incredibly good at it. Thank you. Like, it is, again, like, my fa one of my favorite memories is walking into that studio and watching <laughs> you do your thing. You look hella small behind this ginormous <laughs> monitor, like, with a thousand layers of vocals in front of you. Thank you. Working on the last song on the album mm -hmm. that features Nona. Yeah. What was it like playing the album for her? I didn't play the whole album for her, but I did play the song that she's on. Okay. She was very excited to be on the album, and she was very moved by it and she loved that she was there and then she told many stories about all the different times she's been on my albums <laughs> she was like it's not the first time it's there's been many more i was on the first one <laughs> yeah it's interesting because the album starts with a question and ends with an answer from a person that i love and trust so implicitly. I cherish what my family has to share with me. 
an advice that I call upon in my own existence. Like mm -hmm. I, I listened to you that. You texted me about it. Yeah, I was like, I need to hear that fucking voice memo. <laughs> I just <laughs> need to hear the reminder. I need, the funny I need that thing, lesson. Not to like change topics, no. but the funniest thing about that voice memo is that sometimes when I'm with Nona, I will just record her for like <laughs> hours because she's the funniest fucking person on the planet. And that tiny thing is in the is in the dead middle of like an hour of her and Shirley like <laughs> bitching about men and about feminism and about how well yeah it just i it's it's the funniest someday there'll be an extended cut of the song and you'll hear Shirley her best friend and Nona talking about all their, their craziness there was a in my head a version of the album where i was going to interview like Nona and all of her friends and like my mom and like Lainey and like, <laughs> like everyone. Oh, really strong women. Yeah. And just like showcase as interludes stories and like about love and, and learning and relationships from just women that I love so much, but I didn't have time to do it, but that existed in my head for a while. Understanding that this is, this is a story of strength, right? Uh, you, you tell me. I believe so. <laughs> I believe so. I mean, it starts with doing something that's incredibly strong. And it ends with one of the strongest human beings in your life giving you an answer to a question you desperately need. Sorry. No, please. Please. By the way, if you haven't listened to the album yet, you should. There's going to be a link in the description below. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is, you should be proud of this one. Thank you. You really should. How are you feeling? I feel good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I honestly want to go listen to We Can't Be Friends. <laughs> it's good. It's really good. Is that we, everything? I think we've covered a lot here. What we, are we missing? We looked through my notes. Um, <laughs> nothing, actually. Hey, dude, we've covered, we've covered everything. We've covered... We need to talk about The Boy Is Mine. Can you explain this song to me? Yeah. Oh, my God. How do we forget? That's yeah. going to be everyone's favorite. And it is... Unfortunately. Why do you say unfortunately? <laughs> no, I think... Well, because I think it's just, like, naughty. It's the, it's the version of fantasize on the album that they wanted to have that, you know, it's just, like, a sexier, naughtier one. And I think it's, a, it's more provocative than the rest. But... Oh, yeah. But it's... Um, yeah, it's not about what you think it was about. And it's also a song that I've always wanted to interpolate. Is that what the kids are calling now? A hundred percent. Yeah, I have like many different versions of it from like years ago that I, yeah, but this is like not that. Obviously. Wait, who are you, what, what interpolations on it? Um, just the title. Oh. The title, The Boy's Mine, that's it. Got it, got it, got it. Because I remember there was an old song that I love that you played me years ago and it still comes up on Twitter every now and then. <laughs> you sampled like TLC? Yeah, because of everything, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Oh my God, that's right, you. Yeah, I love. I, I just, I just like that song. Back in the... you, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was supposed to be on. Was it Thank You Next? There's no sweetener. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be on sweetener. Mhm. Mm I love that song. Really good. I'm such a '90s baby. I have so many like '90s interpolation ideas, samples in my brain. But no, this was one. This one finally found a home. I wanted it to come after True Story on the track list because. That song plainly says, like, I'll play the bad girl if you need me to. Mm. Great. I'll do it here. And here's an example. So I, I kind of put it there for that reason. But it's, just, it's supposed to be just kind of like, instead of fantasized, you can have this because I think this might be better. You know? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're not only, that just broke my knee. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You okay? Zach, you're gonna bruise. And you just take me to the hospital. No, I am. I'm gonna bruise. I'm very fragile. Okay, well, <laughs> I'm anemic. I'm so sorry. Am I? I don't know. Can we get a doctor? I bruise like a peach. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we'll move on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be super fun. <laughs> the stars they align, baby. Stars they align. They did. Ah. They did. I feel like we've covered a lot. As Chris Martin said. <laughs> Can you do a tarot card reading for me? Oh my God, I wish I brought them. Yeah, what is that? <laughs> what are you just walking around set looking to do readings Every for Every day. No, no, they come to me. Oh, interesting. They come to me. You are a witch? I am indeed. Hmm. The witchiest witch. Something happened recently that I actually couldn't wrap my head around. 
I need to remember it. <laughs> I need to remember it. I mean, to be fair, you couldn't wrap your head around it. So. It was the witchiest thing. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't, and I didn't. I <laughs> yeah, forgot it. You clearly just <laughs> keep Wait, going. Wait, something really witchy. <laughs> oh, Jim Carrey's birthday. Thank you, Mom. I announced Eternal Sunshine on Jim's birthday, and oh, I didn't right. fucking know it was his birthday. You channel Jim Carrey in so many ways, and you what? have for so long. You, I mean, like his movies and his art exist. Oh like, yeah, subconsciously within you. I as thought you, you meant just... like just in my vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. was like, alrighty then. Thank you. <laughs> no, but there is his art has had such an impact on you. Yeah, absolutely. To... I also think I kind of like. I mean, he's so fucking brilliant. I love him so much. But also I think like I just am so enamored by his ability to, as he put it, I'm quoting him, take all of these broken pieces of himself and apply them to these different characters and heal through them and make use of them. Like it's just so beautiful. Do you I take, love it. Do you take any of that and apply it to what you do? I don't think, I, I, I don't think I would say, I mean, intentionally, I, I don't know, but that's what, I guess that we're supposed to do is like make out of what is here and like transform these little like cracks and scratches into something more beautiful, I guess. There's like, yeah, I don't know. I guess it's, it's just, he's just so beautiful. He's such a beautiful soul. I emailed him. I said, happy birthday, Jim. And he responded with the most lovely, lovely response as always. We're kind of like, pen pals but like it's once every few like long I, I don't bother him often I don't ever reach out but sometimes he'll I'll send but he always responds which is the sweetest thing and he's always so kind and then there was a follow-up to the response because I didn't want to answer again because I don't want to like yeah. I, I'm like very like whoa I'm scared I don't want to do too much this year I love you it's like you know but he responded again and he was like I just heard about the album title, like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And I was like, oh no, he thinks I did this on his birthday. He thinks I'm so creepy and weird. No, you're Fuck. just a witch. And then I responded and I was like, hey, just, you know, yeah, how crazy, right? <laughs> I promise, I promise I'm not that weird. There's something to you <laughs> making, taking the cracks and the scratches and all that and turning into something beautiful and something that is bigger than oneself. And that is what's happening with this album. Well, thank you. It's really special stuff. Thank you. I hope so. I love you. Thank you. I can't thank you enough for continuing to create art that is so present future, but also rooted in these beautiful parts of nostalgia that really, 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 really are timeless. And yeah, you cloak really beautiful stories in the most awesome sonics. And yeah, this is my thank favorite you. album so far. Thank so. you. So much. It's I, mine too. I, I appreciate this. I love you forever. I love you forever. Yeah, go listen to Internal Sunshine. This is my this is my favorite of our of our of our interviews. My hand's sweaty. I don't wanna That's okay. Thanks. I, I, I love you. I love you too. Yeah, it's pretty sweaty, right? Just be honest. It's not bad. Okay, thank you so much. I won't do you like that in front of the world. <laughs> Ariana Grande. It's everybody. soaked. <laughs> love Ariana, you. <laughs> Ariana Grande, everybody. You happy? I'm happy.